All right, how's it going y'all? So this is gonna be a tutorial on how to create a VLAN for IoT devices or security cameras in Unify. And so what this allows you to do is it allows you to segregate off all those questionable devices you've purchased to make sure if one of those is compromised, they're not able to compromise your entire network. And so security cameras are a great use case for this. Because security cameras, it doesn't matter if they're able to connect to the internet, unless you're maybe doing a software update, but it's a security camera. What's new in them? And if you do need to do that software update, you can easily just give them internet access and then turn it back off once everything's updated. And they also only require connection to one device, your NVR generally. And so we're gonna be setting this up and I'm basically gonna be setting this up with the Synology as the NVR. And so this is gonna be specifically for security cameras, though if you were doing an IoT one, you've kinda of got some different options there. There are kinda of different classes of IoT devices. Those are internet of thing devices. So let's say we're talking about your smart thermostat, your Nest thermostat. Well, you can't just give it no internet access because Google requires that to be able to do most of the things. You also can't necessarily block it from the entire network because now it's going to have more issues with everything. And so setting up a IoT VLAN for devices that your phone needs to be able to connect to it's actually quite difficult. A lot of them do not do very well when they've got to traverse over different networks. So it's all about trying to get the most security with the least headache. And so for example, the way I'm actually setting up my IoT network is my IoT network is almost all for smart devices. So I have a smart home. And so what that means is all the light switches are smart and can be controlled by your phone. All of the different doors, the locks are able to be controlled from your phone everything is controlled through your phone, even the sprinkler system. And so what that means is there's a lot of devices on the network that I have no idea where they came from because the previous owner put it all in. And so what my plan is for this is I'm actually only putting things on that network that do not directly work with Apple HomeKit. Apple HomeKit is what I'm using for my smart home and it happens to have by far the most strict requirements for both security and communication to be part of Apple HomeKit. And so because of that, any HomeKit enabled devices that are native HomeKit, I'm going to trust. And quite frankly, at a certain point, you have to trust things. Otherwise, you're going to spend so much time unable to use all your smart devices. And so all of those I'm going to trust and just play right on the network. Then for all the devices that are not, I am not going to trust them but I do still need to bring them into Apple HomeKit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a virtual machine that has a foot in both networks. It's going to be on the main network and also the IoT network. And so it's basically going to be a little bit of a DMZ for the actual network. So what'll happen is all the smart devices who are not part of Apple HomeKit are going to be communicating with this virtual machine and the virtual machine is going to be running HomeBridge. So HomeBridge allows pretty much any device that somebody's written a plugin for to be put into Apple HomeKit. And so all the devices will connect over this VLAN to HomeBridge who also has access to the VLAN. Then HomeBridge will also have access to the rest of the network so it can also communicate with all my devices. So my phone will be able to directly connect to it. And so in this way, I have a very good buffer in between my VLANs. It's not perfectly secure, but it's a lot better than just letting everything on the main network because now there's only one point of failure, that home bridge. And it's unlikely that these devices will be able to hit it that hard to mess it up. But it's good to just make sure you know if there are devices that just need to be connected to the internet, VLANs are easy. But for devices that need to be able to be connected to your phone as well to work, that's where stuff gets really complicated. And so you've just got to start either trusting devices, which is what I'm doing, or setting up very advanced configuration rules that sometimes will work and sometimes will not. All right, so now onto this. So I have this switch right here, which is a Unify switch, and you are going to need a Unify switch that has advanced layer two capabilities. Pretty much all of them have it, except for that like miniature five port switch that's PoE. That's really it. Just make sure they've got the ability to have VLANs, though most of them should have it. And you are going to need a Unify OS console. And for my case, I'm actually gonna be setting up the VLANs on my Unify Dream Machine Pro, which means it'll all be so much easier. Though if you have like a PF Sense box and you're using that, you're gonna to have to create the VLAN on both the switches 
and also on the actual router. All right, so this is a little bit loud, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. So I'm gonna start off with everything on the same network, and then we're gonna go ahead and create a VLAN, and I'll be back. All right, so now I've just gone through, plugged everything in, and we'll go ahead and open up this guy right here, and we'll see what is plugged into what. So it's pretty simple right now. So this right here, this 100 megabit connection is my security camera. And then this connection right here is actually the connection to my Synology. So I hooked it up directly to my Synology and it's also connected to the rest of the network in this port right here. Very, very simple setup, right? You can obviously expand this out however you'd like to. And so the reason I've got this connection directly to the Synology itself is Synology does not do very well with multiple VLANs. And so just use the multiple network ports on the back each as their own individual VLAN and you'll have a much better time. And so right now, the way we're set up is anybody on the network can talk to the security camera and the security camera can talk to anybody else, which is not really what we want to set up. So we wanna go ahead and set it up as its own VLAN. But the first thing you wanna make sure to do is go into the cameras and make sure that they are set up for DHCP. Oh yeah, here, here's my lovely living room, as you can see. This is my table right here, so it is completely empty in the dining room. But we're gonna go ahead and just make sure that we are on DHCP. And that way, when we change it to the new network, we will be good. All right, and so now let's go ahead and just set up the entire thing. So we're gonna go ahead and go into Unify, Settings, Networks, and we're just gonna go ahead and create a new network. So we're just gonna call this security camera. And you'll select your router. See, I actually have a layer three router, so I could actually use this right here, this enterprise switch as the router, but I'm just going to use the UDM Pro, keeps it easy. And we do not need a VPN. We're not gonna be doing any filtering on it, but we are going to be having it as a VLAN and we will not be enabling auto scale network because I want to control everything. And we will just choose its IP subnet. And so I'm going to be setting this as 192.168.1, which is how I've set mine up and slash 24. I don't have that many cameras. And so yeah, just automatically have its own DHCP range. Everything there should be fine. It's pretty much everything you want. And so now we're just going to go ahead and hit add network. Okay. So now we have this new network here. And so now what we need to do is we're just gonna go ahead and start switching over those devices to only be on this network. And so by default, all VLANs are accessible by all things. So what we're gonna switch this over to and configure the switch is we are going to say those ports are only able to use this VLAN. That's the beauty of a VLAN. Is it's really just like you have its own independent hardware, it's a virtual LAN. So you can pretend like you've got a whole separate switch, but everything just goes through the same switch, if that makes sense. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and select the ports that I need for the VLAN, which is going to be this one right here, port profile, networks, and just say security camera. And so we're just gonna go ahead and apply changes. And so now this one right here will only be on security camera. You can see that right here. So now we're gonna go over to the Synology one and do the exact same thing as well. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to just go in and you can power cycle the port, which is awesome. So basically what that means is I just rebooted the device right from here because it's getting its power from the switch. So I can just turn the power off and turn the power back on. So now we should be able to go in and go into client devices and eventually it'll refresh and boom. Now we have that new IP address on that new object. So perfect, now it's actually sequestered on its own domain. But if we go ahead and copy it and hit it, we can actually see that it still connects even though I'm not on that network. So we need to go ahead and change that really quick. So right now, because we're able to connect to it, it's not much of a VLAN for a security purpose, it's a VLAN for segmentation purposes. So that's useful for corporate environments where you've got so many devices, they can't all be on the same LAN, but you still want them to be able to talk. But for our use cases, for a home use case, and for a security VLAN, it's useless. All right, so now what we need to do is do what's called disabling inter-VLAN routing. And so the way we're gonna do that is pretty simple. 
And hopefully Unify does not move this again. Unify loves invalidating my tutorials by changing up the UI, but it seems like it's a little bit more stable now. But for now, it's under settings, traffic and security, global threat management, and firewall. Pretty much you just gotta find the firewall rules and edit them. And we're gonna go ahead and open up the LAN ones. And you can see there's a few here that have automatically been created anytime you have a VLAN. And we're just gonna go ahead and create a new rule. And so what this is gonna be is LAN in. And then for the description, we'll just say block from security camera. So basically this will block any connection from the security camera VLAN to anyone else. And this will operate before any predefined rules and which is what we want. And we will just go ahead and reject it. And we'll say any protocols. We'll say the source is anywhere on a specific network and we'll just select the security camera one and it will block everything from there. Destination, you can actually go ahead and say network and you can say that our main LAN or you could also just say a address port group but we'll just go ahead and say we'll block everything from the security camera one to the main LAN, we will automatically drop it. And now we'll just go ahead and hit apply changes. And so now what we will go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and create another one the opposite of way around. So right now we could actually leave this because basically anything on the security camera VLAN would not be able to talk to our main LAN, but vice versa would work. And so that's actually fairly secure, but we'll go ahead and block all traffic between them just to make it easier. That way nobody on our main network can start pulling up our security cameras without going through the Synology. And we're just going to do the exact same thing. So we'll say anything from the LAN to the security camera VLAN, we'll go ahead and drop that as well. So now we can go ahead and try the exact same thing we did earlier and we'll say, boom, it's immediately dropped because there's no connection in between them. And so that means there's no communication allowed between those two networks, which is exactly what we'd like. Now say I need to go ahead and for whatever reason, I need my laptop to be able to talk to these cameras, very normal. And so what you can do is grab just a direct connection to the VLAN like I'm about to do now. And I'm just going to set up one of these ports on the UDM to actually be on this exact thing. And this way we will be able to actually talk to it. So I'm plugged into the switch right now. And so you can see this connection right here is my laptop connection right here. So right now the way it's set up is actually my Mac could say, Hey, I actually want to join that VLAN because it's allowed any ports right now. And so that could be a security vulnerability for your network. For me, it's not one because well, I don't care if anybody gets on that network. I just don't want anything on that network to get off. But what you would want to do is set up the default ports for everything else to be only on your LAN, only on a specific network that you want it to be. And then for any switches in between, you need them to have access to all the VLANs. And so what you would want to do is you'd want to set up every single one of these ports to be actually on the very specific LAN you want it to be. And that would be the most secure. But this port right here, which is that last port, you would actually need it to be on both VLANs because it's the one that's hooked up to the main network. And so it's gotta be on both VLANs so everything can still talk. And so you want all your switches on all the VLANs and then you want only your devices on the specific VLAN it needs to be. But right now I'm just gonna leave it as all of them, just it's easier. And real quick, we'll just switch ourselves over to specifically the security camera VLAN and once again, if you wanted to set up every single port to be on, only on a specific VLAN, you would do that here and just select the LAN one. All right, and so now it'll go ahead and switch over and I'm gonna go ahead and set up my network preferences. And as you can see, it's not change over yet. So what you need to do sometimes is unplug and plug back in. And that way it makes sure to reconnect because otherwise your device will not switch over DHCP reservations until the DHCP changes off. And as you can see, now that I plugged it back in, I'm now on the security camera VLAN. So now I should be able to go and hit this real link. Boom, just like that. 
And so now I'm actually able to be on there, which is perfect, exactly what we wanted. So now once again, I can control the cameras through that, but that's the only way you can control them is to actually get on that VLAN. All right, perfect. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and undo that because I don't need it. And now let's go ahead and hook up to the Synology. All right, so I've just gone ahead and logged into my Synology and we'll go ahead and open up Control Panel, Network, Network Interface. And so we'll see right here, boom, LAN 1 is on that VLAN because it's on that 192.168.1 IP address. And so this way, our Synology is kind of that middleman that allows everybody on the LAN to see the security cameras and the security cameras to record to it. And so now we can just go ahead and add it in there just as a security camera really quick in surveillance station. I think it's actually already in here too. Yep, and I'm just gonna edit its IP address to show that it works. Boom. And so just like that, we've got a nice secure network. None of the security cameras are able to do anything and we could even disable their internet access if we wanted to by adding in additional firewall rules. And so this way we've got this middleman and we know that none of the security cameras can attack our network and nobody on our network is gonna be able to see the security cameras unless they've got access to the Synology. And so by segregating everything off like this, it just makes for a much more secure network. All right, well that's really gonna be it for this tutorial. Go ahead and leave any of the tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.